Don't leave your girl around me, true player for real. It's That's true, Ben B. Yeah, Big Rude. Ain't no half step in Marcus Jack. I think I finally, I finally picked a song. That's you, <laughs> universally that's name, universally loved by everybody Because I got Tony over here doing the pretty girl face I got Big Rude thinking he's, he, that he's Biggie And we got Carlton Banks who ain't even in the hip hop Who now. is definitely feeling it as well So ain't no half stepping Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J So we gonna move into the what the hell segment And I tell you man It's a couple things that we gonna get into tonight uh, I, I'm really, really asking what the hell. The first thing, and I'll kind of set it up, and we'll go around the room. K Dub has rejoined us. He he's with us. He on the live line. I'll bring him in in just a moment. Uh, Christopher Dorner uh, is a uh, uh, Desert Storm veteran uh, who is also a former Los Angeles Police Department uh, officer who uh, apparently, and I'll just kind of set it up briefly. Uh, sometime in 06, 07, he was part of a, uh, stop where a allegedly mentally challenged, uh, party was arrested and this party was beaten up by the police department or the police officers. I should say these officers, uh, beat the guy up so bad where Mr. Uh, Mr. Dorner wanted to report it. So he reports it to the superiors. Apparently the blue wall of silence was violated by this action and he was retaliated against. And these, this of course is his position uh, where he was disciplined and in about a year ended up being fired uh, for other things. But allegedly it was directly related to him basically snitching on other cops um, and there was the last few years where there were appeals. Uh, one of the appeals uh, was led by a gentleman, I believe his name was Randall Kwan, who is an ex-police officer who was one of the highest ranking uh, Chinese American police officers who was the advocate allegedly for Mr. Dorner. Things didn't work out. I won't get too much into it, but things didn't work out for Mr. Dorner. He's fired, doesn't get his job back. He writes this 14, 13, 14 page manifesto uh, that basically illustrates the racist tactics of the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, he says in part that they uh, haven't changed at all since the days of Rodney King over 20 years ago. And a lot of the people who were around in them days who allowed those police officers to do what they do are now in police positions of power now. Uh, and of course, we know that Mr. Dorner has since uh, gone on a rampage, killing two people uh, who had nothing to do with it, also killing a police officer. So he's got three bodies on him uh, and he's now a fugitive. Dub, I'm going to come to you first on this one. There's a lot of areas that we can get into with regards to this. But based on what we have said to kind of set it up, why don't you tell us what your initial thoughts are and then we'll go around the room. Dub? To be honest, man, you know, uh, this really, I, I don't know what happened, but when I, when it first came on, it kind of caught my eye, and I don't know why or whatever it is, but it made, something in me just had me just kind of look at it and, and grow a lot of interest in it, and um, listening to everything that I'm listening on on TV, so on and so forth, I just had a funny feeling about it, and I know that some of the things that I might say, that you, people may, may disagree with, hey, that's your own opinion, but... To be totally honest with you, I don't condone him shooting the uh, two officers or three officers. I believe it's three officers that he's actually shot at and may have uh, killed. Um, but reading, I took the time and I read through his manifesto and it just really, to be honest with you, man, I really don't think that this guy is the person that the media and the police department are tr trying to portray him as. I think that a lot of the things that he talks about within his manifesto is uh, things that you have to keep in, that you have to question. And you have to wonder why a number of different things were happening that he speaks about. I mean, within his manifesto, it's very long, and I actually took the time to read, read through it. And um, it really is very detailed and he consistently is asking for investigative reporters to go to specific files and ask for specific clearances to to read different types of uh of, of uh documentation as well as watching testimony and, and affidavits and things of that nature and asking for them to review um 
within the manifesto. I mean, he he, he gets specific as far as who he who he's looking for or he wants to cause harm to. He also makes mention, and this is something that you know, watching it on TV, that a lot of people have to realize and watch with your third eye and listen with your third ear, is that they're trying to portray him as being crazy, psychotic, so on and so forth, but a number of psychologists and psychiatrists have, have read it, and they said that that is, that is not this man. Um, let, me stop, let me stop you there, Doug. We're going to go around the room and kind of get everybody to jump in. Tony, what's your thoughts on what's going on? Yeah, I, I actually agree with K-Dub. Um, it was kind of ironic. This story came up on my radar maybe a week after I watched um, the movie The Negotiator with Samuel Jackson. Um, very similar situation. He was a police officer, and, you know, they pretty much tried to set him up for killing saying he killed his partner and he ended up you know taking the department um hostage some important people there um and you really just you know the the things that he's um alleging are is nothing new this is the first not the first time we've heard this so uh of course they're gonna they're gonna draw this really ugly picture of this man and no i don't agree with him killing these people that he's killed um but you know you do have to kind of you got to put some merit into into what he's saying i mean who actually sits and writes a 13 14 um page manifesto of of just nonsense big rope oh my opinion the lapd did this to themselves um really you're gonna just work out some dude who is clearly trained in most of the people there um when I mean, you tried to cover some stuff up, so you went to the good old boy system, protected old boy, and you just didn't think this dude would just simply try to, you know, go about things the right way, all this stuff. Yeah, you can call him a snitch, but let's let's be real here. I mean, half of the LAPD is probably dirty, and he's just trying to, he was trying to protect, do his job, serve and protect. When all these other people are doing dirty stuff, and he's come out, like I said, his manifesto will be like, yo, here, 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 this stuff is dirty. Number two, he killed the innocent two people because, if I'm correct, the innocent woman was the daughter of the retired police chief. That I just referenced. Correct. And pretty much he said, I'm coming after anybody who had a badge in your family. So, you know, he should have done... He that's unfortunately you bring this stuff upon yourself. They ain't never gonna catch that guy. Call I, banks. What is it? A, mar, a modern day Colombiana? I mean, you know how she went after everybody that did her family wrong and whatnot. So I, I, I look at it like this: the dude is like the DC sniper. You're gonna have to catch him, and the thing about catching him is you don't know when he's gonna pop up. Well, the, the thing you about know. the thing about excuse me, sorry to to cut in, cut in. No, thing about this, sorry. You're right. This considering you can't compare this guy to a DC sniper because that dude just killed people for whatever. This dude has a mission. He has a mission. He's trying to take certain people out or make certain people pay. You know, he's not gonna kill any Joe Blow on the street if they ain't got nothing to do with it. Right. Or Let somebody me. or somebody in their family who got nothing to do with it. He has a clear plan yeah. on what he's gonna do. He's gone to the mountains. I mean, you found his burnt up truck. He's he's got a plan, and, I, and I, I've had this conversation with a couple of people pers- personal to me. One of them is Kato, which is the reason why I definitely wanted to have him uh, on the show in this segment. Dub, I'm gonna have you respond to my next statement. Just just stand by for a minute. But one of the things that we debated on was this guy crazy, and I think the dude's crazy. Uh, I just do. I think anytime you kill people, you're a little bit crazy. Th- that's just how I feel. You can sit and you can justify the things that were done to him and his retaliation and you can try to apply logic to it as best you can and yeah he was done wrong if you agree or if you feel sympathetic to his plight knowing what we know about the los angeles police department and knowing what i know about me reading his manifesto because i read it myself as well uh i believe him i i I believe him i i think he is telling the truth but I still think he's crazy as hell. You don't go and kill people just because you're mad. You don't. Now, I think what this story does is it highlights a lot of aspects, not only of the LAPD, but also of 
just our United States government. One, they sending drones after this dude. Like drones, like the kind of drones that they send in the freaking military. military drones. They sending after him. Now, if there's a military drone to go after one individual fugitive, how many of them drones you think watching your ass right now? One. Two. The fact that this dude is spilling the beans about everything that goes on in the NY in the LAPD and the fact that he's saying that, you know, it ain't no different than what was going on with Rodney King and he's using his own training against him. Yeah, that's scary as hell. That's freaking him out because you got this guy who's basically putting you on blast for all your bull and he ain't scared to die. And he got the whole world freaked out. So, yeah, you mad about that. That's true. The fact that they're going to reopen the case and they saying and they're not doing it to appease him, that's bull too. Because real talk, if you was really interested in reopening this case, you would have done it before. So now all of a sudden, because you got this guy out here embarrassing you, using the skills that y'all taught him to taunt you, now all of a sudden you want to reopen the case where he told y'all before this stuff was going on, now all of a sudden you want to reopen the case. So it's crazy as hell. If you read the manifesto, it's rambling, he's all over the place, it's crazy as hell, but... If you, like Dub said, you listen with a third eye, and, and you, you you look with a third eye, and you listen with a third ear, you will hear that this dude is highly intelligent. Yep. But I still think he's crazy as hell. K Dub. Yo, I, I, give me give me a minute to try to break this down. There's a lot of things that you have to put in question. One, it also it puts a light on the LAPD. But here's another thing that brings it even into a bigger light is that um this guy does have a military background, and a lot of the things that he's doing. He's been trained to do, and this is what we do in other countries, unbeknownst to us. Um, I have a source that actually works at the Towers Jail uh, in Los Angeles, and she and I spoke on Friday because, like I stated, it just something was inside of me that I wanted to know more. And what she stated to me was that a lot of individuals that are former servicemen and women, when they join these police forces, they still have that battlefield mentality. So, you know, there's a lot of things that they teach you in the police academy, but there's a lot more things that they teach you in military that allow you to basically live off, live on the lamb, you know. So, you know, that's one thing to take perspective. Also, here's, here's how I look at it, is that, you know, they're trying to paint this man in this particular light because of the embarrassment to the, uh, to the, to the police department. Keep in mind... That within his manifesto, he made mention of Daryl Gates and Mark Furman. Did a lot of us know that Daryl Gates and Mark Furman are still employed by the LAPD as commands and staff uh, supervisory positions? Why don't you Why don't you tell everybody who they are? Because a lot of people don't know who they are. They were involved. They were involved in in uh, the OJ trial, as well as you heard them around with the uh, Rodney King's uh, 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 videotape. In fact, even go further. On the Rodney King videotape, one of the officers who was uh, involved in that, Captain Rolando Solano, is now a commanding officer of the LAPD police station on West uh, in the West uh, Los Angeles division. So if you have these individuals that have been already proven to kind of have a shady background, and now they're supervisors of other oh, police that, I mean, how do you how do you hold people accountable when you look at the person that's ahead of you and he's infamous for doing a lot of things? Let's go. Let's go to another thing. They had a description of his truck on. I want to say it may have been Friday or even Thursday. The police department, because they also rambled right now, shot at a truck with two Hispanic females. One of them happened to be 71 years old. The other one was her daughter. They were delivering newspapers. And they were both shot, both of them. It, yeah, and it was the wrong make and model of what they were looking for. Yeah. They riddled up, the, they riddled up that truck. Just today, from what I understand, uh, the police department wants to offer them a, a, a vehicle, you know, to kind of say, you know, all bad. You know what's funny about that, Dub? You know what's crazy about that? And I'm going to move on to Tony here in a minute. But you know what's crazy about you bringing up that point? The fact that the same police department said that they would welcome him if he wanted to come in and give himself up but this is the same police department that's shooting up old ladies you know what i mean like you shooting up old ladies because you think it's him you haven't confirmed it's him you think it's him but we expect to believe that 
if he turned himself in, that he not going to get accidentally shot up. by This dude, he knows, if you read the manifesto, he knows it's the end game for him. You know, he he's not coming back from this. But the whole, but the, but, 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 but hold up, let me finish this point. But this whole shoot first, ask questions later mentality that you have from the police department, you know, if we're supposed to be, you know, guilt, uh, innocent until proven guilty, and then you shooting up people when you don't even realize it's him. That's a problem. Doug, hold tight. I do need to move around the room. Tony, what you got? I just want to say, you know, as, as far as this man, maybe he is, you know, a little off. Um, and who wouldn't be after, you know, losing their career, essentially? You know, he can't get a, a real job after this, <laughs> um, aside from, you know, the wrongs that he's seen. Um, and I can tell you, you know, I'm former military, never was in a war, you know, situation. My Fortunately, I never left uh, U.S. soil, but you are trained to survive. And if he's in survival mode, there there is no coming back from that. And they got to send someone else to get him. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, I've never been in a war situation, but I if I need to make it, I'm going to make it, and I'm going to use every tool that I have to to make sure that I do. And let's just be honest: how long do you think he's been planning this? He's been out of the, he's been dealing with this for at least the last five years, so. This dude already has a plan. He knows what's up. They ain't going to never find that guy unless he wants to be found. As you know, it's crazy. We got said hitting us up on the Mix LR, uh, uh, Mix LR fan page. New Age Rambo First Blood. Rambo. You know, you know, it's funny. You know, it's almost kind of tongue in cheek that he makes that point. But if you remember the movie Rambo, there's some, some, there's some similarities here. Uh, because, you know, Sylvester Stallone was... You know, pretty much innocent until they pushed him to do some real bad stuff. And then, of course, they had to take him in, in custody. Call him back. You know, I look at it like this. Y'all need to go ahead and open up the investigation. You're not going to find a man. Tony, you say he won't get a job. He he going to jail, unfortunately. He's, no, going, he's, he's going to the cemetery. He's That's die. where he's going. He, if yeah, he hasn't yeah, already he, tuneled his way to Alaska, he's going to yeah, die. He, he, he ain't going to get no job. He ain't going to worry about that. A, si- a six-foot, 270-pound black man with tattoos and a bald head. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. Big uh, K Dub, I had to cut you off. You had a final point that you wanted to make before we wrap up the segment. What you got? What I what I wanted to say was that you know, from what I understand today, they are reopening the case. That's kind of unprecedented. And 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 I, if I was individuals out there, I wouldn't want the same people that he's accusing of doing these things to them to you know be investigating the the uh, the cases. But here's something that's right out in the open. Do you understand that they have a uh, what is it, a million dollar, not bail, but a million dollar uh, warrant right. for this guy or whatever, right? When have you ever, ever saw that? I mean, even the even the D.C. sniper, there was no type of a, a, a million dollar bounty out for someone. I think the difference is you got this guy who is targeting police and police officials, and we know that the police take their own safety a little bit more seriously than they take the safety of civilians, and that may have something to do with it. And a lot of that money is coming from private citizens and businesses and things of that sort, so that may have something to do with it to do with it as well. Uh, Big Rube, you get the final word on the subject. Because they could possibly be just as dirty. Well, I don't think there's any question. I think that uh, the LAPD has shown uh, in the past that there's some issues with their integrity. Uh, Anytime you got video of four dudes beating the hell out of one guy and they all walk, uh, I was done with them then. Uh, But that's just me. Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we want to know what the hell is up with this congressman. Congressman getting on Michelle Obama for going to a funeral. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, this is Tiffany in Chicago, and I'm listening to Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. on GlobalScaleRadio.net. 